started at about like 1984, 1985-ish. Um, I think one of my first gigs that I played at was at Vinci Manor. It was on the west side. Okay. Um, that was around... <clears throat> like 85, 86. Like... Can you name some of the more other places that you used to spin in? Yeah, oh man. Um, uh, Sawyer's, the Ascot Hotel, Bismarck, um, Hyde Park Athletic Club, Powerhouse, Medusa's, Riviera, CODs, AKAs, Coconuts. Yeah, from north to south. What was the first piece of equipment you bought? Do you still have it in your setup? Actually, I do. Uh, my first equipment that I first purchased was a Pioneer reel to reel. I still have it to this day. I actually bought two of them. Back in the days, um, technology was a little bit different. We didn't have CDs and laptops and all that stuff, so. We would bring like the big reel to reels. If we wanted to play like exclusive music, we would bring the reel to reels or we'd you know, play stuff on cassette or tape. So, uh, that was pretty much my forte back then. Then obviously we had the turntables, but we didn't have all the sophisticated stuff that we have now, obviously, so. So, I ask you a question, like with the reel, do you, you, you use the reel to reels now? Yeah, I still use them now today. And why would you? still use them you can switch to like you know CDs or you know MP3s or well for one the technology the fidelity it's kind of like a, for example if a DJ likes vinyl he's a, like a vinyl purist he loves to play records it's something about the sound and the quality of tape versus something that's processed or it's digital so I still like that warm feel now obviously I can still do all the, like all the newer age stuff with the USBs the controllers and so forth. I can do all that stuff, Serato and all that, but sometimes it's always good to still have those basic, uh, how can I say, like the basic essentials as far as recording now, because things are so, uh, they're integrated, the technology is better, the sound quality is better. You could take something that's old and make it sound like brand new. VSTs and plugins and so forth. Um, so you can take like some of your old nostalgic stuff and make it sound up to par like today. So it's good to um, it's basically um, it's basically good to do both. What and who were your early house music influences, and how much was Ron Hardy influence on you? Man, ooh, I could tell you a whole lot of stories of me and Ron. Ron was like my big brother, so. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I remember we would do remixes together. Like I would start on the remix, and he'll finish it off for me. Or you know, like we make tracks in the studio and so forth. So uh, around that time, you know, I, I'm a teenager, obviously. So like uh, all these guys were like a lot older than me, but I was so just hungry to be out there. And you know, I just started going to the events and supporting and so forth. And next thing you know, I got that opportunity. And it was my turn, so I you know, just obviously just took advantage of that opportunity that I got and just turned it into something. And you know, it evolved into this. When you're DJing today, do you read the room the same way you did in your early days when you DJing? Like if you were spinning at the music box, Sawyer's, places like that, does your approach differ from selecting music back then to now? Not really. It's just the maturity that comes with it. I, I think back then I just had more, like more of an eye to tiger feel, and now that I'm more comfortable and I'm more professional, it allows me to be able to walk into a room, you know, and how to get structured or, or, or get prepared. As far as my preparation is concerned, I'm a lot more disciplined now. As far as my preparation back then, you know, I just wing it. <laughs> now it's like I come in. No set plans. I never plan my set or like, you know, I'm going to play this first, then I'm going to play that. It's always a blank canvas to me. So what I do is I just create along the way because if I already got a plan, it's not going to be fun. Yeah, yeah. So I just kind of like come off the top of my head and just kind of paint a picture in the room while I'm playing my set. 
So it's I figure I'm more disciplined now than I ever was. Back then, it's just chaotic, you know. Yeah. Sounds in the red, turn it down, blah, blah, blah. Now I'm a lot more seasoned because I understand the professionalism when it comes down to the weight of um, the quality of the sound is in the room and so forth, and how I have to carry myself, you know, as a DJ, producer, and artist. So I'm a lot more structured. I'm a lot more disciplined now.